Hello everyone and welcome to my newest sewing video. As in the name, my channel focuses on all aspects of Hearthcraft, but this year I decided to introduce sewing to my channel, something I've been passionate about for years now. I created the perfect dress for autumn step by step, and I decided to document the process, so I hope you'll follow along. First, I am crawling out of my sewing cave for a quick hello. Praying Mantis. Hello. It has been quite some time since I've shared a sewing video. My last one was in spring when I made a historic dress, an 18th century gown. This dress is going to be a modern one. It's a simple pen tucked bodice with a gathered skirt and some patch pockets. Put my own little special spin on the patch pockets, which you will see. I didn't plan on making a video about this dress, I was just going to do it because I drafted the pattern some time ago and I wanted to make a pretty dress. But then once I looked at the footage and I saw how beautiful the contrast was of the florals on the background, I thought, let me let me just finish this, let me go all the way through and just make a sewing video for you guys. Just wanted to quickly say thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll stick around for the end for the reveal, even though if you're on my Instagram you see me wearing the dress already. Without further ado, let's get started. To begin, I am cutting the dress from a sturdy cotton broadcloth. This is a reproduction fabric of printed cottons from the Civil War era, which may explain why it was so stiff, even after I soaked it in baking soda and even vinegar. The weight and body of the fabric worked in my favor, however, since I've drafted the bodice with quarter-inch pin tucks adjacent to the center front. It would have been a huge pain to sew tiny pin tucks into something that was more slippery and lightweight, so in the end, I'm really grateful for my fabric choice, and I think the pin tucks turned out really crispy and beautiful. Though this is a modern dress, I do not own a modern sewing machine. I purchased this antique hand-turned machine a couple of years ago and have since cleaned it up. It's a Singer model dating back to 1904, which I think is incredible to be able to use a piece of history in my everyday sewing. Once the pen tucks are sewn in, it's time to begin assembling the princess seams on the bodice. No matter what I do, I always struggle with this part. I always make this part way too curvy, so I've had to go back and clip off. Um, see how curved that is? It needs to be straighter. Because when I put it on, I, I can immediately see the mistake that I've made, so I've had to go back and fix this half, and it's looking much better. So now I'm doing it on this half, and then hopefully it, we will have a properly fitted bodice. Bam! Perfect. I think that's right. We will see. Once I'm happy with the fit of the bodice, it's time to start felling down the seams. The bodice entirely took a couple of days, but all in all it was rather a smooth process that I really enjoyed. So I'm just trying to show you what I've done here. 
It was gaping a lot at center front. I'm assuming it's because I extended center front just as a straight line and not as a curve. Close the spaces between the pin tucks. Now the pin tucks are flush with each other. They're going to be stitched down and then there will be a facing here to finish off the neck. Hopefully that makes sense and you will see soon exactly what I mean. Now that the bodice is complete, it's time to begin the skirt. I designed the dress to have a gathered skirt, so I ordered an extra yard of fabric. I was a bit worried once more that the fabric would be too stiff and heavy for such delicate gathers, but it actually gathered beautifully. I ripped off um, the bottom section of the skirt piece, which I had cut a swatch from. It was uneven. So I have this long piece, which I am going to cut in half and then seam together to make double the length. And that's gonna fold over in half to form the waist tie. So I'll have just enough for a nice, long, pretty waist tie. Good evening, this is a very ugly shot, but it's the best way for me to quickly explain what I'm doing. I am drafting the skirt, which is very simple, it's just a couple of blocks um, torn on the grain, and then around knee length I want a ruffle to begin. The ruffle is a little bit too short, I'm having to piece on some of these, just extra pieces. You won't really see it, especially if it's in Hello Juniper. I'm really not opposed to piecing. I'm gonna spend the evening just stitching up the side seams here, extending the ruffle, um, gathering the ruffle, attaching it, and then maybe tomorrow morning I will begin pleating the skirt width into the front and back waist. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Though it's hard to tell here, the skirt actually took quite a while. Sewing long rows of gathering stitches into this country floral fabric with my old hand turned machine in the dim evening light was a relaxing and immersive experience. Or maybe that's just my romantic sensibilities talking, who knows. In any case, there's still a lot more sewing to do. In fact, I fear I filmed way too much sewing and this video is entirely too long, but that's besides the point. It's too late now. Let's have another sewing montage. This is my first fitting of the dress with the skirt and bodice attached and I'm so pleased! The length is perfect and it's like perfectly swooshy. Um, that's not a very good swoosh but you get it. The fabric is stiff but I think it really works with this design and I've left a little bit of ease in the waist because I have my waist tie. So now my next step is to, I just have it pinned here, so finishing the edge here and adding the 
button placket, adding the buttons all the way down, and then of course my beautiful sleeves, which I think are gonna be puff sleeves. So gorgeous, I'm so excited. Hi, I'm back again so soon, but I wanted to share a dilemma that I've run into as usual. Um, so yes, the skirt is pretty perfect, right? But I was gonna do patch pockets and you're supposed to attach the patch pockets first and I didn't. So now I have to do it like when it's already gathered, which as you can imagine is a big pain in the butt. As if I already didn't have enough work to do, I decided to put a whimsical spin on the patch pockets by making them drawstring pockets just so they wouldn't jut out awkwardly at the hip. So I'm cutting and finishing eyelet holes all along each pocket opening then threading through some of this steel gray satin ribbon from my stash. And then, yes, wrangling the entire dress underneath the machine to stitch the pockets into place. Absolute madness, do not recommend. And finally, at long last, I'm getting to work on the sleeves. I think it's the general consensus among seamstresses or anybody who sews that sleeves are the worst, which is why I procrastinated for this long. I am designing this sort of elbow length puffed peasant sleeve, which as you will see did not work. It was entirely too much fabric for the design of the dress, but I got there eventually. It just looks like a sausage. Quick spoiler alert, this is the sleeve design that I ended up choosing. Now, on to the final sewing montage, where I hand stitch buttons and buttonholes, which really isn't dramatic enough for this soundtrack, but I think the weather really helped. Finally, after an effort that spanned a couple of months actually, and some finishing details, the dress is complete. Hope you'll stick around for the review. Hello, um, the wind and the birds are calling, but that is the beauty of nature. I just wanted to wish all of you guys a very happy autumn equinox from my perch underneath this gorgeous old tree. I've just finished filming the reveal for this, this for this dress that I never even intended on um, filming a process for, but I think that's part of the serendipity of life. If you've made it this far, I just want to thank you so much for watching, and I have a lot more videos on the way. It's just a slow and steady thing, and Again, I think that's what my channel is all about. I try not to rush through, though it is difficult sometimes, and 
I get so inspired and there's so much to share, but at the same time, I need to sit here and be able to enjoy it as well. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it here. If you're so inclined, I hope you will subscribe. My audio isn't always garbage like this. Okay, it's garbage most of the time, I admit it, but I will get better and one day I'll even get a better camera. But for now, I think that this is good enough to show you what I need to show you. If you celebrate the equinox, if you celebrate Mabin, however you celebrate, whatever your beliefs are, I'm just wishing you a very happy holiday and a happy harvest. And I will see you guys quite soon. Bye. The absolute oasis that I am walking into. It is so beautiful. The I think it's called bunch grass, the little purple top grass. It's like purple clouds in the distance and there's some goldenrod. Oh, it's so beautiful. I can't wait to get some footage of this. Turns out I picked the absolute worst day to come out here on this prairie because they're mowing it, or however, whatever the official industrial term is. And if you think that this footage was peaceful, it absolutely was not, because I almost died. But for the art, though, we do it for the art.